Professor Butler, who teaches at George Washington University Law School in Washington, D.C., believes in a concept called jury nullification, which allows a juror, and if you had your way, at the instruction of the judge, just prior to retiring to the jury room, the judge would instruct in your legal world, the jury, after talking about the law and the laws that obtain, the judge would also say to that jury, you also have the right, ladies and gentlemen, to vote your conscience. The jury has the responsibility, Phil, to do justice. That's why we have a constitutional right to a trial by jury. If jurors don't think the law is fair, they don't have to apply the law. That's a proud part of our American legal tradition. But this is done covertly, isn't it? It's not done covertly, no. If the jury can have the conversation about whether they think justice is being oh, done. That's, in the jury room, you sure, mean? Sure, that's what they're there to do, justice. But, but they are obliged to pass a test before they become candidates for jury duty, which says, will you uphold the law? Exactly, and jury nullification is part of the law. It's part of our Constitution. Well, jury nullification, as I understand it, Professor, is, in your concept, uh, a circumstance that would allow, for example, uh, a black juror looking upon a black defendant who didn't hurt anybody, uh, you, you think a juror ought to be able to look at that black defendant, go into the jury room and say, hey, this kid did this, he sold this, but I think these laws suck, pardon the language of the street, and I'm going to vote to acquit. The juror ought to ask herself, is this fair? What about those statistics you just mentioned? Why are there so many black men in jail? Are black people really that more dangerous, violent, or criminals than white people? I don't think so. There's something that's fundamentally racist about our criminal justice system, so I wonder if jurors should use their power to endorse that system. From your article in the, Le in the Yale Law Journal, my goal is the subversion of American criminal justice, at least as it now exists, through jury nullification. African Americans can prevent the application of one particularly destructive instrument of white supremacy, you speak of American criminal justice, to some African American people, and this they can do immediately. They can do by acquitting non-violent black defendants of crimes for which the law uh, prescribes a jury sentence, a, a uh, prison sentence. Well, what I'm trying to do, Phil, is two things. One, to keep some nonviolent people who break the law out of prison if prison isn't going to do them or their community any good. Other important thing is to bring back rehabilitation, which our criminal justice system has abandoned. If you break the law now, especially if you're African American and break the law, the idea is three strikes and you're out, lock them up and throw away the key. Right. What happened to rehabilitation? Hopefully this will send them... Okay. Let's understand that your notion of jury nullification happens all the time. Sure it does. Especially but what's different, though? And you're telling us, you want to bring this out of the closet, is that it? Yeah, I, I want to acknowledge that jurors are doing this every day. I'm a former prosecutor. I have a lot of tr trust and faith and confidence in the ability of jurors to do the right thing. In fact, I trust the average juror more than I trust the average lawmaker, the average congressman who makes the law. Tell me... One in three black men in the 20s in the, is in the criminal system. Prisons are places to send black men who misbehave in white society. Do you agree with that? I think that prison has become the way we deal with urban problems and social problems like poverty and inferior education. If somebody makes a mistake, we want to put them in a box where we don't have to look at them and think about them. We can't afford to do that. Did you know that the United States imprisons more people than any other industrialized nation in the world, including South Africa, including the Soviet Union. 1.5 million in jail. Does anybody think that our citizens are that much more violent or criminal than people in other countries? No. The point is that that's how we use prison. That's our urban policy now. That's our social policy. Stick them in a box. We don't have to think about them. We don't have to, we can yes. forget about them. But so, you know what we do, Phil? We what? spend a lot more money on them than otherwise. California now spends more money locking up its citizens than it does educating them. More money in prison than education. I think that's criminal. Yes. So, yeah. okay. 
So, is it not true that your, your call, and you have, you've got the credentials, you have been a prosecutor, but you want black jurors, black jurors, to con very, give very serious consideration to acquitting black defendants who don't, who haven't, done physical harm to another person. Sure, and if white jurors are if white jurors are interested in my proposal and they want to follow it, I think that's great because the real problem is with how many people in general we put in prison. But the problem is especially concentrated in my African American community. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you who agrees with you. The militia agree with you. Anti-abortion people, not all but many, who believe that a white juror ought to vote his conscience and not give life or the death penalty to a person who shoots an abortion doctor. You know this, don't you? Sure, and I know who else agrees with me too. Jurors during slavery times would consider cases with slaves. Running away from slavery was a crime. Those slaves and the white people who helped them would be prosecuted for breaking the law. And many jurors who were all white at this time would acquit them because they thought that that law was unfair. Yeah. So the point is that jury nullification be, can be used for good, it can be used for evil. It's like any other power. It was used in colonial America, wasn't it? Sure was. So we had colonial jurors wanting to hang people who were uh, insurrecting against the king. Our, our and men. our patriots came forward on the juries and said, he walks. Sure. And we think of those people as heroes now, and so do I. The point, the reason why we have a right to a trial by peers is because we want jurors to use their conscience. We want them to determine justice. We don't want robots, we don't want computers. We right. want flesh and blood human beings. Right, so when the Simi Valley jury retires to consider the case of Stacy Kuhn and Lawrence Powell and the other uh, cops who were convicted of beating Rodney King, depriving Rodney uh, of offensive police conduct, a white juror in your legal world could, before retiring to the jury room, look at those cops and say, not guilty. Phil, you don't think they do that already? They did it in Simi Valley. Sure, that's right. They do it all the time. But so you're forgiving it with this jury nullification thesis that you bring your Harvard-Yale credentials to promote. I, I'm hardly forgiven and all I'm doing is recognizing that it's out there and saying let's have a conversation about it and let's talk about how to use this power responsibly. Emerson Elliott sits next to you. You've, you're the New Jersey president, sir, of the Fully Informed Jury Association. You've organized uh, to try to get state laws passed requiring judges to inform juries that they can vote their conscience no matter what the law says. Absolutely. But we disagree that it should apply just to black jurors. It should apply to black jurors and white jurors. He agrees. He agrees. Yeah. He said yes. Yeah. 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 I, he agrees, I assume reluctantly, he agrees in order to be consistent. He can, he can hardly say, okay, for me, not for you. Yeah, but this is a redress, as he sees it, He's absolutely of correct. black people He's absolutely correct. toward a system that is with increasing autocratic... Uh, behavior, right. throwing more and more blacks in jail. Yes, and it goes back to John Adams, who in 1771 told the jury that they could disregard the law. Uh -huh. So when those jurors look down at the popular O.J. Simpson there in the dock, having spent more than a year in jail, that, that was not jury nullification. Vote their conscience. Right. What's different about that? It, what's different is that wasn't jury nullification, that was reasonable doubt. <laughs> Again, Phil. DNA put his blood at the scene, in the Bronco, at his house, and in his bedroom, on the socks. What's it going to take for you? And the you? star government witness is a racist, lying cop. What about that? What about the way the police mucked up the evidence? Again, I think that that was nullification. I mean, that was reasonable doubt. Not Keith Waters, attorney at law, private practice in D.C. Here is, here is Mr. Waters. President of the National Bar Association. What do you think he thinks about this? <laughs> What's he going to say? We'll find out when we come back in. <laughs> Justin.